Cassidy. 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 <laughs> the roof is energized. Welcome back to the Grand Lady. In today's show, we're going to tell you a lot about our solar panel project. It's been a labor of love, and we're pretty excited to have it almost complete and almost ready to start powering the grid. If you're enjoying our show, please hit the subscribe, like, and let's get Bell. Bell. <laughs> <laughs> and why should they hit the bell? <laughs> You want me to start over, right? No, just tell me, why should they hit the bell button? The bell. Uh, the bell gets you a notification that there's a new episode out. Yay! <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> We're going to go talk to the solar panel installation crew a little bit about the solar system we got. Oh my god, I can hear Jim laughing. <laughs> But I have walked all through this house. Where the heck is he? Oh, he's in the I don't know. That's the one thing about having a big house, I guess. You can can't find anybody in it. There they are. Hey, that's Randy talking with Jim. You may remember him from um, a couple episodes ago, but he's our solar panel guy. Put this up so I can say it. Um, <coughs> we've landed the wires from the into this 100 amp breaker panel. We're calling it a combined box. Wait a minute. Let's go back to the very beginning when we decided to get solar in the first place. You said you always knew you wanted to have solar panels on the Grand Lady. Yep. How come? Because it has 45 degree angle roof planes and there's no no immediate obstructions to the sun all the way around it so oh. a nice angle to look at the sun on three sides of the house right from our nicely angled roofs yeah so did you notice that on the day we first came here yeah really it was one of the things that i liked oh my gosh i wasn't even looking at that i was looking gaga at the and staircase I was very glad to hear you say that you wouldn't mind having the two trees in the backyard disappear because they were shading the south side of the roof. Yeah. Well, so, one of them was dead. The other one was uh, too close to the house. It was, it was going to be dead soon or fall in the house. Oh, um, anyway, that made me happy. So what is it about solar energy that you like? It's clean. It's not wasting the sun energy that falls on us every day. Mm -hmm. It's economical. And with fossil fuel prices and things going up in the future, and us producing our own electricity, it's going to be an advantage for us financially. And that's kind of happening right now sooner than I expected. Gas at 525 I think, for premium right now. So $5.25 gets us 35 to 40 miles along. Or we can spend a dollar and a half on electricity and go the same distance. It's about 20% of the cost over using gasoline. The march of the electron hose. <laughs> the electron hose. We've all heard there's significantly less carbon emissions if you're driving an electric car versus burning gasoline for fuel. This holds true for whatever fuel you're burning to create the electricity that charges your car, except for coal. Maybe I'm just a green energy nerd, but I'm very excited to know that I can charge my electric car from solar panels on the Grand Lady and basically produce no pollution to drive around except what was needed to create the solar panels and the car. For us to purchase, the overall cost is about 16 cents a kilowatt hour right now. When we sell it back, we're in a tier that's 50 cents a kilowatt hour, so. <gasps> wow, that's even more than I expected. I thought yeah. it was like twice as much, but that's like. Yeah, three times. Three times, we get paid three times as much per kilowatt hour than we have to spend 
to get one out just because our energy is solar energy which right now power companies want to get because they get credit for having part of their power come from renewable resources and we're in an area where it's not very many people have solar so an early adopter solar at a high incentive rate is it funny to you that we're considering an early adopter in 2022? It's insane that we should be considered an early adopter. <laughs> How long have we had solar panels available to residential homes in this country? Long, long time. 1970s? Actually, the first solar panel was created by a New York physicist named Charles Fritz in 1884. Here's a picture of his solar panels on his roof in 1888 in New York City. Solar panels were available to residential homes in the early 1970s, but they were quite expensive. But over the years, technology has developed in such a way that installation costs have dropped about 70% in the last 10 years. Who tell us about how the bidirectional meter works? That's not the term they use here. That's what- now that uh, you said that, I... <laughs> That's what Randy used, bidirectional. Yeah, well, that's, that's actually what it is. Just go from there. I'll insert it right here. Yeah. What it's really called. <laughs> Tell us how what a bi-directional meter, or whatever it is, uh, works. It's one meter, and when we use it, the dial goes up and says we're using electricity, and when we're not using very much and we're producing it, the dial comes back and goes down the swing. When it passes where it was at the end of the month, last month, it goes this way. And they owe us. Over there we owe them. So in the summertime, hopefully, if everything works well, we'll have a lot of time where the meter's over here and they owe us, which I don't think they're going to pay us for it. They'll just go in the, in, uh, onto our account and then we'll, wintertime, using it this way until all of that's gone. It's a different system in Baltimore. The meter is the same, and it reduces the electric bill, but instead of getting paid a specific amount for the amount that we produce more on the days that it happens, we sell solar credits on a market, an exchange sort of like the stock market, so that other companies can offset their production against solar. So we're a small solar producer there. Okay. They're called Shrek credits. Shrek. And they're sold, they're auctioned. <laughs> so it's like in the, in the stock market. But that's not what happens in New York. It doesn't happen here. What happens here? You either credits. pay them or they pay you. Okay. Yeah. The meters are at once a month. Oh. If you don't have solar, then it's always going up. Right. And the difference between this month and that month is what you, what you pay for. Here, it's quite possible that this reading one month this way instead. Right. So it will be a smaller number, in which case we bank it. It's quite fascinating. We had our solar panel package set up so it could eventually charge to a battery bank. But we didn't have that installed right now. We're just going to use the net meter, and perhaps later on we might want to use one, or maybe not. Let's start with the process of this. You came to the house and said, this would be very good for solar panels. And then what's the next thing you did? Went looking for a solar installer, get bids on putting on a solar system. And how did you pick your solar installer? I, I went to a website called Energy Sage. I don't know much about it, except that it offered to put one in touch with solar installers who are certified in New York mm. under NY Certa. And we got four or five different companies, two of which were through that website. And those are the ones that I actually got bids from. And then you chose the one you chose because why? Went back and forth with both of them. And the one that we went with was willing to engineer getting more panels on the roof than the other company. Oh. So we went with the company that would give us the most panels. And. Our initial costs, if we just bought this ourselves with no incentives, what would our cost have been? Mm, pretty close to 60 grand. 
this is the initial estimate for a 54 panel project which we had hoped to be able to put on the roof but we only ended up with 50. you can see there are some ny serta incentives and some federal tax credits and some state tax credits there's the total price of course ours will be adjusted just a little bit because we have four fewer panels the other thing i wanted to say about that is because we have a construction loan part of the loan calculation is what the final value of the house will be and the loan needs to be less than that right <laughs> okay so it wasn't a scary loan to get or a, not a very different one anyone that's bought an old house to remodel would be familiar with that yeah and it's cheaper to put it on the mortgage than it is to take a loan specifically for the solar from the state right so the interest rate is about a quarter of what it would be to just right. finance it through the state. So that but makes it ideal for including in your loan package right when you buy a house. Yeah. And to, to fig figure it all in together. Right. And there was no, it wasn't strange to them, there was no pushback or... No, the only thing, the only thing pushback we've had about the solar has been from our bank um, inspector, not the city inspector. Why are you putting the solar on first instead of doing the other stuff? And I'm like, well, because it'll make us some money. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you really said? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, timing. Yeah. <laughs> That's, we put this in right when we put the loan in, which was a year ago. And yeah. this is where we are at a year. We have other yeah. things happen. And he was like, well, most people rebuild the porch. And I said, okay. Yeah, That's well, fine we don't, for most people. don't need the porch right now. <laughs> <laughs> what do we need the porch for? It's not going to help us get in here any faster at all. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty. Yeah. It does. It does. To be fair, it does look a little bit like Hillbilly Shack here right now from the front. But you don't want to do these things too fast. What are you going to do with your time? Lord, what am I going to do with all this time on my hands? I hope I don't get hooked on whiskey and start honky-tonking. You could buy a lot of kilowatt hours of energy with $35,000. It seems like a lifetime's worth of energy to me, but I don't really know how many kilowatt hours we use in our life or pay for. But Well, you can you can do approximations on that and figure out where the years of house is. Yeah. But there's a lot of assumptions in that. I don't really care where the break-even point is. Well, I bring that up is because I think that's where a lot of people's minds are. Well, I'm never going to overcome the cost of these solar panels. Next Gen Solar has done an estimate for us based on our house size and the annual average usage of energy. Our house is expected to use 18,717 kilowatt hours per year. This estimate with 54 solar panels shows an energy offset of 120%. This means by our estimated annual energy usage, we will be collecting 20% more than we will be using. We'll only have 50 panels, so maybe we'll be closer to 100% energy offset. We'll have to see. Although this is specifically made for our size of house, there are other averages that are used, like the average amount of energy used per day, the average efficiency of your home, and the average appliance usage, the average amount of insulation, and the average temperature a home is usually kept at. So there are many, many ways to make this energy offset number even better. Look at what's happened to gasoline right. prices since we purchased the house. They have doubled. Right. And that's going to continue. And that's yeah. not part of the current break-even calculations. What is the forecast going to be? I mean, you can make assumptions about it, but the higher those right. go, the closer the break-even point is. Architects and people in construction and investment say, if you're building or remodeling a house, don't remodel it for today's energy efficiency. You model it for the future. Yeah, I think it's yeah. it's environmentally and ethically the right thing to do. Right. And we're banking that it's going to be the best financial thing too. I wanted to hit the financial first because that's usually where people have to think the hardest about how they want to plan their lives out and their house purchases. But for us, because we're also more willing to invest in green energy, probably because we saw firsthand in front of our eyes, for me anyway, watching year after year the tidal glaciers recede and melt and disappear. Um, global warming was absolutely apparent in that short span of time, even in my lifetime. And of course now we're seeing everything that's coming with that. Weather changes and crops and 
disease and it's yeah it's, it's worth a very it present myth yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we don't have to go into the politics at all about it if we have the technology here's the other part what would you say to someone that says those solar panels are just unsightly on your 19th century victorian home i would say they don't appreciate the beauty of the stealth bomb. <laughs> Our right. solar panels, yeah, they're different than shingles on the roof, but yeah. they're matte finish. Yep. They're black just like the roof. They don't stand out in the neighborhood as eyesores. Mm -hmm. They blend in. They provide not only electricity, but they provide shade for that hot asphalt roof too. Quite a bit cooler upstairs this year than it was last year. One thing I always go back to is that people like the Victorian era, I think a lot because it was a unique combination of people embracing the industrial age as well as being, gaining the benefits from being able to access different types of art and style and, and finity and things. And I kind of feel like for the age we are in now, it's sort of embracing that Victorian mindset of, yes, I want the most technologically advanced, lovely, sleek thing I can have in my home. So to me, I feel more Victorian than perhaps, I mean, I would never put anyone down who's restoring a building because that's a beauty in itself, but I don't want to be discounted for thinking the way of it. I think that's a good point. The Victorians were a bit eclectic. Absolutely eclectic. <laughs>So they started off our project by installing the wiring that has to go from the roof where the solar panels are, carry that energy down to the basement where our electrical panel is. Well, you guys have been working up here all day. What you do? Let's see, we've got the home run down to the basement from the attic with all the uh, PV lines. We have to run our ground lines. He ran some uh, conduit in the overhead, it looks like. Yep, yep. The solar company crew is here working on putting this frame for the solar panels. And we got some information about how they put the frames on the roof as well. So apparently I didn't push record when Randy explained this to me. He did give me one of these, so I'm going to tell you how this works, because this is what attaches the frame to the roof. As you can see here on my computer screen, this is the frame that holds the solar panel, and this is the little piece that holds the frame to the roof. And it's a really long wood screw, and it actually screws into the rafters in your attic and gets a sealant here underneath this very flexible rubber and very thick rubber gasket here. Gets tightened down into the roof, screwed into the rafter, or into a piece of wood that's placed between the rafters if they have to put one of these where your rafters are not. So once this all gets tightened down, the sealant put on, it's, it's pretty much waterproof. And then the frames that hold the solar panels attach here. So, although it is another hole in your roof, looks like they put a lot of thought into making this watertight. The solar panels actually uh, extend beyond the frame, so these little connectors are underneath. What's happening right now is the guys are putting in solar decks, and that provides the electrical transition from the solar panels into the house to the conduits. Let's take a moment to appreciate this body language Jim is displaying here. So is it built into those little frame no, pieces? No, they oh. are going to open up the roof. Gotcha. And flash it in. So we had someone really interested in what you're doing and they asked about the holes through the roof actually. Like, how do you manage that's, that? That's the solar duct. 
Okay, it's actually a piece of flashing, typical flashing, only it's very heavy gauge. And uh, we make one penetration through the roof and uh, we, we come up in through that. And then in the solar deck, the wires loop and come in from the bottom. Okay. Do I have one here? I'll show you one. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. And then, then it, that goes. And this goes up underneath the shingles, ah, like a regular piece of flashing. Got it. And so the holes here, it's flashed, and then this gets covered up. Yeah. Like that. It has a cap. So it's like. And it's underneath the modules. Oh, so it's like super protected. Super protected. Super right. watertight. Great. Well, you answered the concerning <laughs> questions of. Are you putting holes in the Everybody wants to know. Right? Yep. <laughs> okay, that's a Heiko. Heiko fitting. Yep. We just make a pen. If you look from this side, you can see there's little holes in it. Right. And the wires run out through the hole. This is like a little conduit that's stuck into the bottom or the side of the edges of the solar deck that's sticking above the roof. This allows the wires that are coming from the solar panels to be rooted into a protective area before they go through the hole that's put through the roof. This is all covered over as you saw before and the solar panels cover everything. And how many of those are you installing up there? Six. Okay. One for each roof. Then on the inside we've got conduit ran to each roof to accept the wires so they can all be ran back to the desk. So the solar guys are still working on the panels. Um, it's a little tight between the house next to us, so it's going to take them a little longer to put the frames on. But they're going to keep working. It is starting to rain, so they might have to shut down for the day. It is so exciting when people show up. It's been so long. It seems like we've been in the dark and cold inside that house, taking things out. It's lovely when things start happening. Thank goodness for spring. <laughs> Andy's telling me about how the energy from the solar panels gets converted from DC into AC right at the base of the solar panel before it's run through the house. The inverter, but this turns the AC right up there. And is that better for safety it's or just, just another matter? system? Just okay. different, you don't lose anything system. in the conversion? No, not at all. Actually, you gain. This is uh, a little more efficient. Yeah. As was requested. As was requested. <laughs> So that's the inverter. Yep. That whole thing. Your panel goes into this, and this comes back out into uh, a main main trunk line, an AC. And it all gets converted and whatever is inside there. Inside this gizmo. Wow. And these are covered by the panels, so they're totally protected from the weather. And all the connections have rubber in them. They're all weather tight. Let's recap everything that's happening here on the outside in our solar system. The sun shines down on our happy little perfectly placed solar panels. The photoelectric energy is converted into direct current energy through the polysilicone wafers that have been arranged and combined with other elements to create a positive and negative end. This direct current energy is then converted into alternating current energy by these little mini inverters underneath each solar panel. That energy is then routed to the solar deck through the side and then through the hole in the roof. Here's what it looks like from the inside. This is our attic and you can see one of the holes where the wires are coming through the solar deck to the inside. And for added fire safety, we're putting fire block through all the roof penetrations. The wires in this conduit are carrying the energy created from the solar panels. But it go down in circles. We've landed the wires from the into this 100 amp breaker panel. We're calling it a combined box. And then from this, we feed the solar power into this disconnect box, which in turn gets brought over and is tied into your, your main power supply. And that's all of it. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound like it's it no work. It's short, but right. it's a lot of work. There's a lot of colors. 
I don't know where to go. See a lot of colors, only feeling blue. There's a lot of colors lost within a haze. Don't rely on others to get you through the maze. The dreams are not the same for me. Standing by the shore, why you're. Voices drowning in the sea. There's too many voices talking back at me. There are a lot of choices waiting to be made. Too many choices making me afraid. Jim had talked about maybe when you guys first made the plan, you could add maybe a few more. We're going to see. Okay. We're going to see if well, there's a spot we could stick an extra one or two we're okay. going to. And he also told me that I didn't know this. This is a pretty large project for a residential. Yes. 54 panels is uh, large for residential. Wow. Well, that's how we roll. <laughs> yeah, the last one was 25. <laughs> wow. Is that a big one usually? 25? No, that's, that's to the average. Standard? Okay. Yeah. Well, we're pretty excited. We are not having a battery bank here. We're actually going to sell back. The, well, the utility company. And that's pretty seamless. Yes. You get a bi-directional meter out there. So if you're making more than you're using, it goes back to that. Perfect. Which in this case should be a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a lot of KWs. Yeah. It's 400, 400 watts per panel and 54 watts. So you've got some serious... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about it. What are the actual numbers? Let us do the calculations. You must use the correct formula to calculate the kilowatt hours produced by your solar system. In Syracuse, New York, we get an average of 6.9 sun hours over 365 days, so averaging winter and summer. Our solar panel system is a 20,000 watt system based on our 50 solar panels at 400 watt capacity for each panel times 75% fudge factor divided by 1,000 to get kilowatt. And we have a total of 103.5 kilowatt hours per day produced by our solar panel system. Considering the average 400,000 square foot house uses about 71 kilowatt hours of energy per day, it's looking pretty good for us that we'll cover our energy and have some to sell back. I say, yeah, buddy, rolling like a book shop, Chevy tuned up like a NASCAR book stop. Fresh paint job, fresh inside, get the outside frame in the trunk wide. Well, yeah. we appreciate it. I appreciate your talking to me about and it. What's What's funny is it's hard to find people to work because solar is such a specialized thing. It doesn't really cross over to anything because DC voltage is totally different than AC voltage, and uh, you're grounding and there's no neutrals on DC voltage where AC voltage has a neutral. So. So this is a whole. You have to really know so your stuff. Different. Right. So Are you having trouble getting people electrically trained to do this kind of work? No, no, not really. It's the uh, hardest thing is keeping the young guys on the roof. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. For me, it's fun. Uh, you know. Right. So. You seem like a happy guy. I am. There's no <laughs> sense in being upset. Right. You know, I don't get frustrated. It's, you know, when I started working for Aaron, 
with the guys and stuff, I go, hey, you guys, I don't get upset. I don't get frustrated. You know, if it's a long day, it's a long day. If there's a problem, we'll get through it. Wow. And that's it. And it's been really good. Oh, that's good. It's been really good. That's good. I don't so. think that's the usual for most construction companies. It's yeah. pretty much hammer, go, go, go. It is. Well, it is hammer, go, go, go. But you, you have to be, make a little light of it sometimes. Right. That's and why I we, do. <laughs> you do. You do. I think that's why we love you guys so much, too. So if you need anything, you let us know. Absolutely. Thank you, Randy. You betcha. Get back to work, you. I'm going to. <laughs> Did you say Presto Dingo? Presto Jingo. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I've got an original Hopalong Cassidy jackknife. You do? Yes. Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly. <laughs> Charting looks like. So that's our roof? Well, one of them. One of them? <laughs> <laughs> one of the many. That's, so this is three, so it's right there, right there. Cool. So if he wants to be able to read the LEDs that are on the mini inverters as okay. it sets the panels, the red LED will flash six times. That'll acknowledge that it's getting the correct DC voltage, but you have to have the AC on. To do it. So first thing we're going to do is we'll do this. Boop. Yeah, lights. I'm gonna let the sun shine and the day. Roof is energized. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. And I will leave my windows open so that I can. Get some ice cream. Ready? Ready. Right, here we go. Jumaya. Raise the glass, Jumaya. We miss you, sweetie. <laughs> 